here's a little trick most people would probably never guess most people probably never even use a cutoff saw like this but i have learned over the years that these saw blades for whatever reason if you're trying to cut something that's wide and flat like a piece of like eighth inch by two inch wide bar stock if you lay it flat on the saw bed so it's cutting on the two inch face it is miserable it will struggle and struggle and struggle to cut through that for some reason i guess just because of the contact area but if you stand that bar up on edge so see i took I, got, I just cut five pieces of bar here the rebar stood them up one on top of the other so it's basically a tall skinny piece effectively versus a, a, a short wide piece stand it up so you're cutting on the narrow edge you'll melt right through it just a little lesson for you a little tip for you i've even done it before when i'm cutting um like a piece of square tube sometimes i'll stand that up at a 45 just so you got less contact area that you're cutting on it'll cut way faster anyway i've got to cut five more of these we'll get them laid out over there and then we'll finish laying out the rest of our grid all right so we're into the tedious task of tying rebar my neighbors are unloading their arsenal again um i don't have you know fancy wire tie tools i got wire i bought a spool of wire and uh, just cutting it off at about a foot long, which is way longer than you need, but it makes it easier to work with. And then I'm just checking kind of roughly that things stay 16 on center. So I take a piece of wire, foot long, fold it in half, about six inches, doubled up. And then I'm just setting this, this outer edge piece of bars about three to four inches in from the edge of the concrete, which I think on a three inch slab, I can put it a little closer, three and a half but it'll be okay. Again, 16 on center sort of deal with this grid is really, you know, kind of a rule of thumb, if you will. I think, obviously, if one piece is a little closer or a little further, it doesn't drastically change it. Especially not on this, where it's really not even structural slab. It's just something, it's just here to the mud away from this thing sinking into this wall. So anyway, right now I'm going through and I'm putting, uh, I can't see my face. Right now I'm going through and I'm putting, I'm laying out just the general grid and I'm tying just the ends. So I'm tying the two outside ends to try to keep it as a square grid. And um, you can see I haven't laid out any bar down there on the far end. I started on this end and I didn't, I didn't want to go through and cut everything right away because I didn't, I mean, I got the math in the house. I could go look, <laughs> but I didn't write down how many um, horizontal pieces and how many long pieces I needed. So I'm just kind of cutting a bit at this point. I know I bought, I think, two extra sticks, which I think I rounded up a little bit when I was doing my math as well. So I'll probably end up with three or four extra sticks of bar and a whole bunch of extra chairs. Oh, I got to tell you guys, I don't think I said, uh, I got a really good deal on my bar. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go over here in the shade. Uh, I don't know if the Gallup McCoy's messed up or what, because honestly, I didn't even complain. Like, I didn't even say, like, oh, that's expensive. Uh, she had quoted me the price, and it matched what they had online. And then when she rang it all up, it was way less, like $100 less than I expected. And uh, I said, you got everything, right? Like, I even, I even challenged her. I said, you got everything, right? Yeah, 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 I got it. And I got everything. Um, but the, the bar was like $6.99 a stick was the actual price. She charged me, I think, $4.71 a stick. Um, and then the, the bag of chairs was supposed to be $40, and she charged me like $17. Bucks. So it was like 40 to 50% off um, more on the chairs. But then the roll of tie wire was regular price. Like, it, that was right. So I don't know what she did. I don't know how... Um, but I'm not complaining. Like I said, I got a my whole order of rebar for 38 sticks and number three and 500 chairs and one roll of wire. It was like 168 bucks. So I'm happy with that. I mean, I know I could have gone, obviously I could have gone a, a wholesale rebar seller and gotten it even cheaper, uh, but I would have had to go all the way down to Houston to do that. So I was happy to go here locally to McCoy's and get what I needed and still get it cheap. I think she might've messed up and gave it to me at their cost and <laughs> not at the marked up cost. Anyway, you can see how it's laying out. It's not real complicated. 
16 on center, give or take. I'm gonna go ahead and tie up most of this half um, and then I'll cut and lay out the other half. You can see I'm starting to have to, so it's the pieces across the middle here are 11 six. Basically that gives you three inches in from each side on what would have been a 12 foot wide slab. Um, and so that leaves me an eight foot six cutoff left over from, from that. And so I took the eight foot six piece like this one here foot six piece here on the ground and then I had to cut some three foot sixes or yeah three footers basically to make that up so I'm trying to use up all my scrap as I go that's also why I'm not wanting to overlay too much just yet I try to use up the scrap and then I'll cut a handful more and go from there so that if I do have anything left over hopefully I have full sticks left over and not bits anyway let me keep working on tying and see what my wife wants put it in there what <laughs> you got it all right it is done enough it is not tied at every single intersection it does not need to be um, the most critical things is obviously it's tied on each place there's an overlap like where there's you know a 20 foot jointed bar and then a 15 foot piece or whatever all those over overlaps are tied and all the intersections immediately adjacent to the overlaps are tied. But on long runs, where it's long pieces of straight full bar, like down here we've got 20s overlapping 12s, you know, there's, there's no uh, joints, so you can actually go several intersections without tying, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as all the bar stays bedded in the concrete, it's fine. And so then that's the other thing, we've got our little chairs, which these chairs are, they're garbage. <laughs> they're, they're complete garbage. Um, but they'll work. I know a lot of guys just have a bunch of bricks, little, you know, uh, for like brick siding, they'll have a bunch of bricks and they'll just throw bricks underneath the intersections here and there. And that works a lot better because these little plastic chairs are flimsy. They don't hold up where the crap and then they fall over and the whole rack moves. I actually see one spot right here in the middle. I didn't notice this till just now. There's one spot right there with the bar laying on the ground. And I had the girls helping me do this. They were picking up and putting pieces to see right here we've got intersection so here's one I missed the intersection is actually laying on the ground or the the lap I should say is on the ground now it's up and I should put tie wire there and there just to make sure that both sides of that overlap are good um, yeah I'll get it I'm, I'm pretty well beat down I'm pretty well tired it's, it was very very hot today and this was in the Sun most of the day it's finally not now we're finally in the shade now that we're done <laughs> we're in the shade but it's ready a few more tie wires and it's ready and uh we'll be born tomorrow morning